None of us will ever forget where he was and how he felt when the news was announced. In New York City, for a handful of people, the place was the sidewalk beside the open door of NBC News reporter Gabe Pressman's automobile, listening to the loudspeaker, the car radio. They had known for some minutes that the president was gravely wounded. Then came the instant when the worst was confirmed. A flash from Dallas. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he is dead of bullet wounds. This is the latest information we have from Dallas. We are, of course, standing by to give you all available information as it comes to us. I will repeat with the greatest regret this flash. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he has died of bullet wounds. I find it hard to believe. It's hard to believe it. It's hard to believe it's right. The president died. Approximately 25 minutes. Others, there was a stunned silence and a groping to come to terms with a fact that was almost beyond belief. The face and voice of a young girl summed it up. Bleeding and unconscious. What's your feeling right now? I really couldn't say. Really, right now I just don't know what to do. I don't even know where to go, what to say. Nothing to say. The assassination took place in Dallas as President Kennedy rode in the cavalcade toward the trademark where he was to have luncheon and make a speech. This is what happened beginning shortly before the shots were fired. The voice is that of Charles Murphy of station WBAP, Fort Worth. This was a scene near the Stimmons Expressway. In front, no, this is in front of City Hall in downtown Dallas, a mile east of the shooting scene. Heavy crowds lined the downtown streets to view the presidential party. As in all of the Texas stops, there were many teenagers attracted there by the First Lady and the President. This is Main Street in Dallas. Is this moving west? This is moving west toward the fatal moment. The motorcade is traveling at about 20 to 25 miles an hour, slowly westward down Main Street in the heart of Dallas. The time, about 12.20, during the noon hour, heavy crowds from downtown offices lining the route. That looks like the school depository building on the right, I'm not sure. This, this is the scene of confusion. Something has happened here. The cameraman running toward the scene to the presidential car ahead of him. We caught just a blurred glance of the old school depository building from which the sniper fired the shot. This is the reaction from the crowd. All is confusion at the scene. Here a woman shelters herself. Now racing toward the hospital on Stimmons Freeway, past the trademark to the right where the president was to have spoken, where he was to have criticized the fanatical right. There, a picture. That is Parkland Hospital, a mile and a half to two miles from the shooting scene. Parkland Hospital, where the president died in Dallas. By the time these films were shot, of course, they presidential car was already at the hospital. This is Major General Clifton, the military aide of the president, press secretary going into the hospital. That was silent film of the events along the presidential line of ride, immediately surrounding the fatal moment and described later by reporter Murphy. Thousands had massed 10 and 12 deep along the curb to see the President of the United States. The assassination happened so swiftly, and the motorcade sped off so quickly that few saw it actually taking place. A Dallas man had taken his small son to see the President. Here he tells what he saw. 
Unfortunately, I was probably 15 to 20 feet away from the president when it happened. Tell us exactly what you saw, sir. <laughs> he was coming down the street, and my five-year-old boy and myself were by ourselves on the grass there on Palmer Street, and I asked Joe to wave to him, and Joe waved, and I waved in the man. The man. That's all right, sir. You were ahead, sir. As he, as he was waving back, he was, he was, the shot rang out and he slumped down in the seat. And his wife reached up toward him and as he, as he, as he was slumping down and the second shot went off and it just knocked him down from, from the seat. The two two shots. shots. Two shots. Did you see the man who did the... No, sir, I did not see the man who did it. I, I, all, I, all I did was look in the man's face when he was shot there and saw that expression on his face and grab himself and slide. And the second one, whenever it went, why, I'm positive it had hit him. I hope it didn't, but I'm positive that it hit him, and, it's, and he went all the way down in the car. Then they speeded up, and I didn't know what was going on, so I just grabbed the boy and fell on him in hopes that there wasn't a maniac around. I'm sorry. I can't help you more, but I, I won't forget it. Yes. It's a logical assumption that hatred, far left, far-right, political, religious, economic, or paranoid, moved the person or persons who today committed this combined act of murder and national sabotage. There is in this country, and there has been for too long, an ominous and sickening popularity of hatred. The body of the president lying at this moment in Washington is the thundering testimonial of what hatred comes to and the revolting excesses it perpetrates. Hatred is self-generating, contagious, it feeds upon itself and explodes into violence. It is no inexplicable phenomenon that there are pockets of hatred in our country, areas and communities where the disease is permitted or encouraged or given status by those who can and do influence others. You and I have heard in recent months someone say, those Kennedys ought to be shot. A well-known national magazine recently carried an article saying Chief Justice Warren should be hanged. In its own defense, it said it was only joking, but the left has been equally bad. Tonight, it might be the hope and the resolve of all of us that we've heard the last of this kind of talk, jocular or serious, for the result is tragically the same. David? In Washington, where everything, everything revolves around the government, and this is a company town, really, and where the president is uh, w more than any one person revolves around him, and where, in many cases, the grief today was personal among people who knew him and worked for him. Here are a few pictures, rather random in nature, of some of the sites around Washington today. Flags on embassies, as well as on all other public buildings, at half staff. That, incidentally, is a Russian embassy. This is Lafayette Park, immediately across Pennsylvania Avenue from the White House, where as soon as the first news came out, people began to gather and stand, as they often do. Just stand. The police roped off the sidewalk immediately in front of the White House. St. Matthew's Cathedral is a few blocks from the White House. I rushed up to the chair and said, Senator, Senator Kennedy, your brother, the president, has been shot. He gave a, a jerk to his body, his body tense, but he was absolutely calm. And as I recall, Senator Kennedy, then presiding over the Senate, when he heard this awful news, said no. And that was all. That was Robert Riddell, a member of the staff of the U.S. Senate, who took the news here to Senator Kennedy, Ted Kennedy, who is here with his sister Eunice, leaving in a helicopter for Andrews Base, where they then took a jet plane to Otis Air Force Base in Massachusetts. Now some comments from members of the Senate. We knew him and loved him in West Virginia. 